So now that I have that, I can go ahead and cut cross sections and create curves. So now begins the modeling portion of the demonstration. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut a cross section through the uh, center of the part so I have enough geometry there to create um, that revolution or extrusion, depending on how I want to do it. And then we'll create geometry that represents that fan blade. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and cut a cross section. And you see I can actually toggle and change the cross sections over here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the YZ and slice through in that direction. And then make sure that the position is at zero. So it'll move it so it intersects the zero. Now down below you have an option. You can tell the software to cut a cross section through the polygon mesh with a spline, line arc, or uh, polyline. Um, so for a highly organic shape, I would use a spline, but for something that's pretty prismatic, in this case, I'm going to use a line arc option. And then I'm going to tell the software um, to go ahead and fit that. And I'm going to adjust the tolerance to like all the way down to like one thousandth of an inch. And then when I hit apply, you'll see that it creates a sketch cross section through that geometry for me. And then if I hit next and OK, you see now that I have these curves. So if I hide that polygon, I have the curves cross section. So now if I toggle back over to the polygon mesh, the way we'll do the uh, blade is this. Um, I'll f identify which blade that I'd like to use. So in this instance, I'm going to use this one, the one that I went ahead and used to align to the x-axis. And if I want to just send over curves to uh, get those over into uh, Solid Edge, the best way to do that is to come over to the model, and then there's this Draw Curves option. So you saw before, I did uh, create cross-section through a mesh. Now I'm going to draw curves directly on the mesh. And uh, this, this dialog can be a little bit confusing confusing when you first see it but if you basically use the first tool and then you look at the options down here on the left hand side you can see um, that it, it's not quite as confusing once you understand a couple things so if I click on the mesh you can see that I can just draw curves on the surface of the mesh and then once I get to a corner if I hit escape it will end that curve now, if I need to drag anything around, if I just roll over, I can drag the nodes of the spline. If I need to remove any of these nodes, if I hold control, I can remove them from the spline. And then if I click back on, I can create a new one, but I need to hit escape again to get out of it, because otherwise it'll start drawing another line. So speaking of that, if I just come over here and start drawing, I can create another spline and then hit escape. And then again, you can always come back and manipulate the curves and move them around. So a red node is an endpoint that divides up uh, multiple splines. So essentially, if a spline has all orange dots, it's all one spline. And then a, a red node like that means that's the beginning and end of a spline. So you can see that. And you can actually convert these points to using endpoints. And you see that all the options are down here below. So to try to get more accuracy here, I'll just create some cross sections through the blade. And you'll notice those red curvature collinear uh, contours. What that is, is it's showing you that there is tangency there. So there's a shortcut here. If I click and hold and drag from one side to the other, I can turn tangency off 
or on but they just show you that it's there or not so you don't have to use them um, in this instance it's probably not that important because on the solid edge side these are just going to be used as a guide anyway so these are just to give me enough resolution to draw them inside of Solid Edge or convert them inside of Solid Edge. So you can see that I went ahead and I selected those curves and I drew them. Now, actually, let's go in and draw them on the other side because this isn't necessarily a constant thickness blade. If it was, I would just draw one side and... Uh, offset the surface that I use uh, which you know many of the companies that make these they all know when they're designing it whether it's supposed to be an offset or a constant thickness blade so I'll do the same thing I'll just come around and then draw these. Actually, let's undo that one and, and that right there. And let's start that one again. there now I'll just draw these last few there and you can move these so if I want to drag this out it's really handy to be able to slide these around and add points so if I add a point and then move this so if I want it to follow the flow of the surface here and once I'm done I have the curves. The next step is to convert the curves to free curves. And in this instance, again, I'll lower the, uh, I'll lower the spacing to like half a thou just to give it a little extra accuracy. And it's telling me that the highest it can do is two thou, which is fine. So now, if I hide this, I have curves. So when you use that, that convert to, it also converts the boundaries of the mesh. So if I don't want that, I can actually just click on it and delete it. The same thing goes here. So if there is holes in the mesh, those will show up in there. Um, so I'm not going to bother deleting that. It's nice to have that one as, just as an example to show where it is. But you can see all my curves. And then the other thing that you can do with this, so there's three types of geometry that we can extract from the model. Uh, one of them is prismatic features, which we used for alignment in this instance. The second one is cross-section curves. The third, um, actually four types of geometry, is uh, cross-section curves and splines on the mesh. I guess you could put create curves whether they're 3d or 2d as one object and then the other one is auto surfacing the object so auto surface will go ahead and wrap a surface around the outside of this object and create a cad body that you can then export and send it over to solid edge so now the auto surface is finished so you can see the curves the cad solid well, it's a surface, not a solid, and uh, 
the uh, features. So I can write all of these to an IGES file and send them over to uh, Solid Edge. So if I grab all of these, I can save them out to an IGES. Um, so that's the next step is to go ahead and save these over to Solid Edge. So if I just come over to Save As, I just, and I will just name my file. and write those out. It pops up with an export option dialog, so you can actually tell it to not write out the NURB surfaces if you don't want those, or don't want the features or curves. So like you can choose what you want it to write, and then you can actually tell it to write in a single file. So I'll hit save, and now 